Hello everyone and welcome. Casey here with Modern Witch Doctor. So today I'm going to be doing my first ever primitive pottery post. A lot of my viewers don't know that over the past year I have um, developed this new passion and wonderful hobby for primitive pottery. Now, one of the niches that I seem to have is making head pots, head vessels, or um, head effigy jars. Now, although we find um, head pots all over the world, here in North America, they were strictly um, done by the Mississippian culture, which ranged from about 1200 AD to 1500 AD. These pots are very, very rare, and I believe there's only been about 140 of them ever found. So these pots were being made as a remembrance or a death mask for somebody that had passed away. Now, these pots obviously were not being used to cook with or anything like that. And many of these jars are elaborately decorated with facial tattoos and piercings. And many of them have places and little holes that you can place feathers in and other decorations. So this video is basically going to be a tutorial on how it is that I make these head vessels and the techniques that I use using primitive tools. That way, if anybody's interested in trying to replicate this sort of pottery, um, this gives you a head start. So this is my basic pottery kit. To start with, this is a broken deer leg bone that I actually use for carving. And then I have a very thin rock that I use for scraping and shaping, although most people do use a gourd scraper. I have a deer rib that I have altered into a spoon shape. And then of course, just other primitive bones. I begin by making a circle shape um, platform, and then I add a top coil. Once I add my top coil, I'm basically pulling down the clay from the top to the middle. I do the same thing on the outer edge so that all the edges are completely sealed. This is going to be the base of our head pot. I continue to add my clay coils until I reach a desired height. Now, depending on the temperature um, you're working around, you may have to start molding and sculpting the face of your head pot before you get to the top of it, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. But for now, I'm basically just continuing to add coils and get my pot at least to a height where I can um, sculpt a mouth and a nose. As I continue to add my coils, I'm trying very hard to just keep a smaller frame shape. Keeping my hand here prevents the pot from getting wider as I blend my coils. One important part to remember when you're adding your coils is to make sure they're completely sealed. This is one reason I'm going around the edge and just simply blending with my finger. You don't want to be able to see any lines in between the coil and the clay that you have just added. So our head pot is coming along. Um, basically, I'm just molding the actual um, pot. Now, if you wanted to create this with a round bottom, obviously you can do that if you have a pookie or something with a round bottom that you can place in it. Um, me, because I want this to sit on something, I'm doing the flat bottom today. So now I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then we're going to scrape and kind of start widening our head pot. For my shaper and scraper today, I am using a thin rock I found on a riverbank that has a convex and concave shape. This is going to play a huge part when it comes to shaping your pot. I actually learned this um, in the very beginning of experimenting with pottery that it's not really your fingers in the molding that do it, it's the shaping and the scraping that help mold your pot into a circle or whatever shape it is you prefer. 
Now I want my pot to be somewhat circular, but also in the shape of a head. Um, let's face it, not everybody's heads are completely circular. Now, whenever you're making these sort of pots, unless you're trying to actually replicate a historically accurate pot, you can always be as creative as you would like. So I'm not gonna thin my inner walls too much because um, there's a lot of clay on the outside that's also gonna have to be scraped off. Um, this is something that, once again, you could use your dry um, board scraper, but because I don't have one, I actually am going to be using a um, deer rib bone here. And this is what I've been using, and as you can see, it's got a natural flat edge. It also has um, kind of a convex side here. Oh, sorry, right here. <laughs> um, so what I'm actually going to do with this is use this to scrape up. And I'm gonna put my finger where the indent is. If you can see, there's obviously an indent and this would be where my clay is a little uneven. So this is how we shape it. So at the moment, this is what our little head pot or bowl looks like. As you can see, it's still pretty flexible and nowhere near a perfect shape or really even looks like a head pot yet. So I'm gonna let my clay sit now for a little while so that it can um, not dry, but just firm up a little bit more so I can continue to work with it. Now in uh, modern times, a lot of times potters will place a piece of saran wrap or plastic over this so that it will um, keep the edges pretty moist. However, in primitive times, a hide or wet skin would have been placed over to keep this from drying out. Sometimes when you're also making bigger vessels, um, depending on the clay you're working with, you'll have to take breaks. You will have to allow the clay to harden up a bit so that you're able to continue to add coils. If you do not, a lot of times you will end up with a huge widening pot that's just collapsing or too heavy for the weight of the clay. Now that I'm finished with scraping, I'm going to start with molding the face. I start with cutting a line in the clay and forming what looks like teeth. This is pretty basic and uh, anybody that's ever drew a skeleton in their life, it's the same thing. A line or fake stitches with lines going the other way. This is going to be the base of our mouth. Now, for some reason, my phone shut off when I was blending this, but I made two tiny coils, placed them in the shape of lips, and used my fingernail to blend the outside. Then, of course, just continuing to blend and make it look more like lips. Now, for some reason, in my personal opinion, I feel like the nose is one of the most difficult parts. I usually choose to mold this separately and then add it to my pot. Because I have long fingernails, I'm always putting them to use, and this is actually what I use to blend a lot of my tight spaces. But if you're somebody that does not have long fingernails, um, you can use any sort of bone, tool, even a stick if necessary. Now that my nose and mouth has been added, I'm using my little um, carving tool here, my bone, to kind of shape everything. I'm digging out the nostrils, which very much looks like I'm picking his nose, and shaping the lips and so forth. Now keep in mind your clay is still going to be pretty wet, and don't be upset if it does not look perfect yet. As you continue to work on this, it will dry and harden and look a lot better and will be a lot easier to work with. Now we stopped in the middle of creating the height of our pot to create the nose and the mouth. And sometimes, as I said, depending on the clay you're working with or the temperature um, in which you're working, you may have to do this. I personally prefer to do this. So because I've created these parts of the mold first, I'm now adding a few more coils to give my um, head pot a little more height. You're going to blend the same as you did before, being careful about the new um, sculptures on the front of the pot that you've done. Here is
is what our head pot's looking like so far. So now it's time to start adding the cheekbones and the eyes. Um, obviously making these head pots, unless you're trying to make something historically accurate, you can be as creative as you would like. On my pot, I'm deciding to add high cheekbones rather than eyebrows since I'm leaving the top of the bowl pretty low. This is one main reason that whenever I'm making these um, head pots, I always start at the bottom and work my way up. It just seems to be the easiest way, especially when you're trying to blend and create a seal between the additions you're adding. This process, of course, takes a little while because it's all in perfection, and if you are a perfectionist like me, you're going to spend a long time. I'm now going to start working on the ears. The way that I actually like to do it is create a coil that is skinnier at the top, and then I will kind of fold it inward like a seashell or basically the shape of an ear. I then keep the bottom half um, fat, and I will spread it out a little with my thumb. I then add a few lines onto my clay and we're going to add it doing the same thing as we've done with everything else. Basically using a thin tool or a fingernail to blend the um, clay into the actual pot. You want once again to create a permanent seal. So this is very important. So now all that's left basically is scraping and then smoothing everything. Um, I, as you saw, I use this rock. Sometimes I use this rock for smoothing, depending on the shape I'm looking for. But because I have all these tiny areas to get, I'm actually going to use this little rock today. And I actually find these rocks um, anytime I go to the river. So the purpose of this little rock is basically to smooth the outer part of the clay. This is going to give it that sheen look or that smooth look, um, especially taking your finger and smoothing off any of the leftover clay. I'm going to go around all the tiny areas of my pot with the tiny rock, and then I will go around the leftover big areas with a larger rock. So this is what our nice smooth head pot looks like. Now all he's missing is a few facial tattoos and ear piercings. So as I showed most of you earlier, this is my carving tool that I'm using. And um, as I told you, this is just a broken piece of leg deer bone. And actually, I ran over this with my car. It was in the driveway because of my dog. And the way that it broke was exactly like this. So it was perfect for um, my carving. Now, most of these effigy pots were um, elaborately decorated. And nobody really knows if the um, people that they were mimicking actually had these elaborate facial tattoos. But most of them had a lot of facial tattoos as well as piercings in the ears. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate him however I guess I feel that I want to decorate him. And then we're going to go ahead and put a little holes in his ears for earrings. Now that his war paint is done, it's time for earrings. I'm using a piece of wood that I've sharpened into a, a point or spear basically to create the holes which are going to make his earrings. I also use my uh, sharp piece of wood to clean up any uh, lines that were made with the bone. My head pot is finally finished. Decorated to my liking, he will make a nice soup bowl when he's actually fired. So I will continue to touch this pot up throughout the night and probably even tomorrow morning. I'm scraping off bits of clay that are dry, that don't look right, smoothing other pieces, but for the most part, he is done. 
Now, I will not be able to fire any of my pottery, unfortunately, until it warms up. Um, I am in Maryland. It's obviously the middle of January, so it's extremely cold here and um, not adequate temperature to be firing pottery. Um, for those that are interested in doing primitive pottery or making the head eff effigy jars, excuse me, um, this is the technique I use. Um, as I said in the beginning, I am by far a professional potter, but you saw the techniques that I used and you saw the tools I used. So I absolutely have no doubt that when primitive people or ancient people were making these sort of pots and elaborate really pottery, um, they were using very basic things. So these kind of pots, although it's not going to be perfect, once again, you're not um, molding something on a spinning wheel and it's not beautifully glossed and glazed and all this kind of stuff. But we have amazing, amazing historical pottery that is just unbelievable, especially out of the Southwest. So um, I am very into doing the uh, primitive pottery and these head pots. So I figured it would be a good idea to share it for those that were curious, um, especially since I myself had Googled trying to make these and was in, unable to find anything. So I'm glad that um, I'm actually putting this video up for anybody that is curious. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and till next time, stay wild. For more witch doctor craziness, like and subscribe.